Let me put my little head thing back on. Mm. Puff it out. Puff it out. Oh, this is my nostrils. I'm like, what the? And I'm just doing that on live. Crazy beans. Hello. Hello, hello. I'm just sitting here. Hey, y'all. I'm sitting here. Uh, what y'all doing tonight? had a nice dinner now i'm kind of full i kind of want some more of it i'm not gonna lie to you it's something to drink Okay. I'm like, what the? So what I'm doing right now is I'm on Etsy. And because y'all made me put all my stuff back up on my shop <laughs> and lit fire under my butt, I am doing some SEO research, which means uh, search engine optimization. So I'm looking up keywords for my listings. I think that I overthink things and I think that I over like I think that I overthink things like when I was starting up my Etsy shop and everything I was over because a lot of people online and when you listen to a lot of these gurus and people who are supposed to be professionals and experts and stuff like that you hear them talk about a lot of things and one of the things that you hear them talk about is SEO and I think because the way they made it seem like, oh, it's just so hard. And a lot of, hey, y'all, I see y'all coming in. A lot of people make things seem like, oh, it's so hard. And honestly, if you just sit down and you focus and you buckle down and narrow your vision and narrow your goals and narrow what you're trying to do and stop trying to do, stop trying to multitask and do a hundred things at one time, you can honestly achieve your goals and you can and think you'll find out that things aren't as hard you just made it hard you know what i mean hey y'all i see y'all coming in so 
I think that life is as hard as we make it. And a lot of things that people say. Yes, man. Hey, Peanut. Who am I talking to? You want to know who I'm talking to? He came and looked. He's looking like, who are you talking to? Now he's running back to his room. He's a little man, a little boss. But I believe that we're capable of doing any and everything. I just think that we, we think we make it hard by thinking too much into it and thinking. Uh, excuse me, y'all. I am tired. I am so tired. I had to cook this food for these kids, and I am so tired. But I believe that we're capable. We're all capable of doing everything that we have in our minds. We just have to learn how to narrow things down, and we have to learn how to focus. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm about to get some of these noodles. Is the water? I told my husband to give me some water. To buy me some water. And look at this big ass thing he bought. I ain't want that much water. Damn. But I appreciate it. So I did it tonight. I did a lasagna pasta. And it's so good. When I tell you it's so good. It's a mixture of ground beef, ground beef, uh, the pasta noodles, um, pasta sauce, and cheese. It's the only way you can get me to eat red sauce. Because I am not a spaghetti fan. I think that spaghetti is disgusting. I do not like spaghetti. But, if you mix it with cheese, I'll eat it. I was most definitely eating. Hey y'all. I see y'all popping in and out. Thank you. You know what's crazy? A lot of my videos, I was kind of nervous to post. First of all, my first account got banned when I reached 10,000. So it's amazing that this account reached double that. For me doing the same thing I was doing, just in a different way, I did it better. I learned the energy of TikTok. And I tweaked what I was doing to the energy of TikTok and the rules. When I came on this account, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to talk about race. I don't want to talk about because last time, my last account, I'm not going to lie, it kind of sent me into like a, a funk, like a depression, just talking about that stuff and talking about, although I said this time, instead of just overwhelming the content and overwhelming my page with the, the sad stories of black people and, you know, and white people as well and just it being in America, I'm going to mix the content up with, with different things. That way, I don't get overwhelmed. Y'all don't get overwhelmed. Because some of the things that you learn can be very devastating. And I'm not going to lie, it shook me to my core. And I haven't even post. I haven't even post uh, some of the other stuff that I had on my page yet. And there's a lot of things that I had planned on presenting. And there are some things now that people are requesting that I'm going to present. And I try to do everything. <clears throat> I know I've seen a lot of comments when people where people say, thank you for doing that out of love or doing it with, you know, love behind it. I love everybody. I love humans. I love us. I love the human experience. I believe that we all have the ability to be better and uh, to be better and to grow better. It's all up to us individually. I think that my I think my account was. I think it was passive aggressively done. I really do. Because it was just banning me. Like it would 
like my live it started with my live i got banned for my live and they never put they never took me off of like they never um they uh it started with me being banned on live they said they thought that i was under 16 because you know 16 year olds on this app they can't go live they're not supposed to anyway so it started with that and then certain one of certain ones of my videos started getting flagged and i was like hmm this is getting weird and then jen extra i saw her post this was right before it happened and it's crazy because i like the big the big content creators are going to get banned before i do so jen extra um who is a content creator that i admire she's now poppy tail she's no longer jen extra she made an announcement she was like yeah they are starting to ban like some of the some of the black creators are complaining that they're getting banned and i'm like i don't have to worry about that my account is small compared to everybody else who's talking a lot of stuff and even like how i present my stuff i don't think that i come from a hateful place i try not to I've always been told that your delivery determines how people will hear you. And even when I am upset or I'm frustrated, I would rather my message be heard than my anger to be heard. Because everybody wants to get their point across. Everybody, there's always a purpose behind the anger and the frustration. I want you to hear the purpose rather than be blindsided by the anger and the frustration. You know what I mean? So I try my best to at least calm myself down or try to get myself in a place where my energy is at a place where people will hear me because I want people to hear me. That's the purpose. You know, I'm not one of those people who talk just to be just to get attention. I don't need attention like that. I'm not going to lie to you. If I speak. It's going to have purpose behind it, and it's going to be a reason behind it. I don't talk just to want it. I'm not one of those people who like to talk to hear myself talk. Like, mm -mm. no, I'm not. Or talk to hurt somebody's feelings. You know, because to be honest with you, I'm going to be honest with you. When you sit back and you look at all of this, and the more that I learn things and I discover things, a lot of white folks got gypped too. A lot of y'all, just in the educational, I mean, I can't cuss. I cuss a lot, but I, I can't cuss because I don't want them to bear my life. But just in the things that you're not taught and the things that you're shielded from, it, it's scary. Because I just looking at it from the from both perspectives, like where we have always had to stand in the crossfire and always be presented with this the racism and the colorism and things like that imagine being shielded from it and being raised to believe that those things don't exist and that those things aren't true and that the world is just normal and peaceful and everybody gets along and all kinds of stuff and then you learn in your adulthood that there's a group of people that have animosity towards you that is some scary shit i'm not gonna lie to you i'm not gonna lie or a group of people that feel some type of way from you about you so now when you're walking through the store it's all awkward i see it i see it when i walk through the store now a lot of people make it seem like oh i don't get on social media like that but you can see it even in the grocery store it's just awkward and it's tension among some people like some people are just very awkward and i'm like this is weird. I kind of feel like I'm in the 1960s. Uh, like, for <laughs> it is. It's crazy. But you have to think about it. Like, there are so many layers to the system and so many things that contributed to that. And I feel like when it comes to government, teachers, because even in the classrooms and officers and Certain things that played a part in being, I think that nothing ever comes good from a third party intervening in a relationship. And the biggest, the biggest culprit of them all is the media.
because me the media has been keeping this up for so many years i majored in communications because i wanted i didn't finish but my goal for majoring in communications was i wanted to break into the the media so that i could start reporting the truth because i felt like they were keeping up a lot of confusion a lot of mess a lot of drama they painted so many bad pictures of people they've kept they've kept everybody divided and once everybody realizes <clears throat> the bigger picture and the underlying truths of all of this trauma because everybody a lot of people have a lot of people are traumatized and don't even know that they're traumatized that's why even when i i was nervous to present i was nervous to present that information about white women because i was like ah they uh, they gonna come for me they, and i'm really shocked at all the love that i've been receiving about it because i'm not trying to come from a place of hate and i do see those videos where there are black people that are lashing out and they're being ugly and you can tell it comes from a place of pain it comes from a place of enduring a place of exhaustion it's coming from a place of their experiences you know and i've experienced a lot i've been through a lot and honestly i should hate everybody to be honest every single soul because i've been done wrong by every person you can imagine <laughs> no, it, it don't matter so but i choose in the midst of that and a lot of these babies on this app are young a lot of them are young and they haven't experienced some of the things that we as older people in our 30s and 40s that's why when i see like 30 and 40 and 50 year olds lashing out at these kids it's like come on now we said some things in our 20s and teens that was like, okay, where our elders had to rear us back and be like, no, you're not going to say that. You're not going to do that. And that's how we should be with them, too. We have to realize that they're young. They're inexperienced. Yes, they are saying all these things and canceling people and all of this. But all in all, we are now that generation. I'm in my 30s. We are that generation now that has to help guide the youth. They are frustrated. They are tired. They are. They have seen what we went through, and they don't want that. And they're looking at, like, what is their future? What is their future supposed to look like if we were supposed to be, especially as the millennials, we grew up with the technology. We grew up with the going to college. We were that generation where almost all of us went to college. Well, more of us went to college than our parents and the parents, you know, our grandparents. 